comes to murdering someone and making it look like a heart attack, a doctor's got to be right up there when it comes to suspects. Don't worry, I've been thinking the same thing. So what else is going on? In order to find that crystal skull, it looks like I'm going to have to find all of Bruno's glass eyes. Bruno wore a glass eye? He wore a lot of glass eyes. Not all at once, of course, but from this box I found in his study, it looks like he had at least 25. What makes you think finding them will lead you to the skull? Something Bruno said to Professor Hotchkiss, whom I've met before, by the way, in Wisconsin. Did I ever tell you about her? Why does that name bring boots to mind? Boots and cheese. Anyway, it turns out she's an expert on the crystal skulls. So Bruno called her once, and when she asked him if he knew where the skull called the Whisperer was, he said, the eyes have it. He meant eyes with an E instead of an A. Right. Did he lose all these eyes or hide them on purpose? I'm pretty sure he hid them on purpose. And I thought Henry was weird. Get this. Bruno had a pet iguana that he liked to dress up in little costumes. Say what? I kid you not. I found little outfits for Iggy. That's the iguana's name, Iggy, in Bruno's study. He could dress him up like a mailman, an optometrist, or a pirate. Now I've heard everything. No, you haven't. Iggy also hides things in the vents, and depending on what outfit he's wearing, he'll go into the vent and bring out different stuff. You have got to be joking. Like, I dressed him up as an optometrist, and he brought me out a glass eye. Poor Henry. If weirdness is genetic, it doesn't stand a chance. I'm pretty sure a letter caused Bruno Bollet to have that heart attack. A letter? Apparently, Bruno and Rene had recently taken the crystal skull to a lab to see if it was authentic. The lab guy mailed Bruno a letter summarizing his test results, which showed the skull was a fake. And when Bruno read it, I think the shock was just too much for him. So much for his being murdered. Actually, that's not quite true. When I called the lab guy, he said that in his letter, he told Bruno the skull was authentic. You mean someone faked the letter that said the skull was a fake? Yep, which means Bruno more or less did die at someone else's hand. Good grief. Have you told anyone? No, and I don't think I'm going to. For one thing, I don't want to tip my hand. For another thing, I don't want anyone thinking that skull is the real deal after all. Which apparently it is. The only thing those lab tests proved is that the skull is at least 300 years old. Not that it has magical powers or anything. But still, finding it would be pretty cool. While I was picking mushrooms for Rene, I almost lost my hand to one of Bruno's pets. He have a big dog or something? A big alligator named Bernie. How can you make a pet out of an alligator? Uh, apparently by exploiting their fondness for marshmallows. Well, stay away from him. I like your hands just the way they are. I can't quite figure out whether Renee neglected to tell me about him by accident or on purpose. Hey, if you're not sure, you'd better stay away from her, too. How about a hint? What do you need? I bet if I get that dummy I found in Bruno's hideaway to make the right sounds, I'll be closer to finding that crystal skull. But what are the right sounds? And what's the right order? First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and open the chest that has the weird symbols on it. Once you read what's inside the chest, those symbols on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. Excellent. Thanks for the advice. My pleasure. Bye. Check.
Looks like the right name. That's got to be it. That 
doesn't make sense. That looks like the right name. There, I'm no dummy. Looks like the right name. Let's hope Neil is lying down by now. Bingo. Smells right to me. Hopefully this will givens me a clue.
Bess. How you doing? Great. I just took a nice, luxurious bubble bath, and I'm ready to boogie. When are you coming back here? That's still kind of hard to say, but listen. Remember that old photo of a boy and his dog you said you saw in that box of stuff Henry sold to Lamont? Yeah. Did it look like it was maybe taken in the 1920s? That's exactly what it looked like. Why? Because I need to find out the name of Bruno Bollet's dog. And if that boy was Bruno, then that was probably his dog. Was there any writing on the picture? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it said Bruno. That's all it said? Just Bruno? No, it, it said Bruno and, but whatever came after and was hidden by the frame. I really need to know the name of that dog. Oh, no. No, you don't. No more snooping. Uh-uh. Best, just get into that box again and see if the dog's name is on that picture. That's all I want you to do. How? Oh, I can't just go waltzing into Lamont's back room. And he's for sure as heck not going to fall for that sneeze contraption again. There must be some other way you can distract him. Please, Bess, I can't tell you how important this is. You've got to do this for me. Please? Absolutely, unequivocally, for the last time, no. Ah, who am I kidding? We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... Okay. I'll sneak into the back room and take another look at that photo. I mean, I will if I don't screw up. Think positive, Beth. You're going to do fine. You bet I am. In fact, I'm not going to call you again until I have seen that picture. I'm going in. You go, girl. Hey! You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing, so how about I go and get you a nice big bowl of gumbo? Just so happens I'm starving, so hey, you got a deal. Great. I'll be right back. Hey, what'll it be? Can I get a gumbo to go, please? There you go. Knock yourself out. Mm-mm. 